In the next six minutes, you're going to learn how to transform something like this into this. And the good news is there is no drawing skill required. I mean, my goodness, have you seen me draw, please? Let the answer be no. And this is surprisingly, even disgustingly easy to do once you know the different steps involved. So with that said, let's open up Photoshop and get started. So this is the original artwork that one of my students created. They said, Dan, I'm not happy. Can you help me fix this? And there's two main problems here. We have a low risk screenshot from a video game and we need to somehow make that look good. And there's some fundamental steps that you absolutely mustn't skip when compositing because otherwise it's just going to make the rest of the process unnecessarily hard and really frustrating. Here is the original screenshot from the video game and I've grabbed a different background image. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is paste that in, make a selection of the subject, refine that selection with the quick selection tool, and then let's add a layer mask and convert both of these layers to smart objects. Now let's resize and reposition that background image. And then we're going inside the smart object for the character and we're gonna use a high pass filter to sharpen this up because this is a low res screenshot. So let's do a quick before and after. Very nice. And then I'm going to use the brush tool to just mask out any of those hairs that shouldn't be there. I don't know what these are, so I'm going to get rid of them. I think they're part of the character, but I don't like them, so be gone. And I'm just using generative fill to select different areas and remove or refine parts that I don't like. And I'm adding in some hair in a couple of key places, and we're going to build on this in a moment. So on a new layer, let's just throw down a bunch of colors, some medium, light, and dark colors for the hair. And using my hairbrush from the Photoshop Masterclass, I'm going to brush in some hair. Not like that, just make sure you do this slowly and subtly. So we're just gradually building up the these hairs and doing a few individual hairs as well. And this is a hundred thousand times easier with a pen, tablet or display, just because you could control the pen pressure with your stylus. So we're just brushing in lots of hair with that medium purple color. And then as you progress, you can add in some darker shades and some lighter shades, depending on where the light's coming from. And I've got some more hair brushes here that I'm gonna link in the video description. So we're gonna add in some of the white from the original design, but we're gonna do it a bit better this time rather than just use what was in that screenshot. Because remember, this was a low res screenshot from a video game and we're gonna try and turn this into some high quality artwork. Right, let's turn that background layer back on. And then I'm gonna use tilt shift to add a gradual blur. So as we move further away from the camera, things will get more blurry. And if you're interested to see what the hair looks like on its own, this is it. And we're going to use a single curves adjustment layer to completely rebalance the color between the images. And you can see what a massive difference this one adjustment layer makes. Now to balance the exposure, first make everything black and white, and then use another curves adjustment layer to balance the light and dark areas between the different images. So in this case, the subject and the background. And then once you're done, just, well, unblack and white everything. Right, now we're just gonna brush in some new color for the eyes, a bit overpowering, so let's dial down the opacity and then add a curves layer and bump up the brightness and just add a couple of kicker lights in there to add a bit of drama to the eyes. And we can use a solid color layer to just brush in a bit of eyeshadow. And then now we can actually change the eye color to anything. So I think I'm gonna go for like a purpley blue just to fit with everything else. And now we're gonna brush in some more shadows. So we're gonna use an exposure adjustment layer, have your sliders like this in a diagonal line, and then just, well, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that, that's awful. What you're gonna do is bring down the flow value nice and low, and then just go around and brush in some shadows. You wanna do this very gradually and slowly, just building it up piece by piece, because if you rush this step and just brush in huge blobs of black, it's going to look awful. And I can't stress enough the importance of adding the shadows and highlights correctly. Do them wrong, they'll look crap, do it right, and it will look amazing. If I do a quick before and after, you can see the difference. And I'm actually going to do a few more now. Now, if you want to, you can do two separate adjustment layers and do like a first pass and a second pass. Why would you put them on two layers? Well, Dan, that's a very good question. Sometimes it's good because then you can turn them off and on at will. Or if you mess one up, you can delete it and try again. Now for highlights, we're using another exposure layer, but this time the sliders run in the opposite direction. And we're just considering where that light source is behind and maybe there's a moon up above. I don't know. Let's just say there's a moon and you can see we're casting some light around the edge of the armor. And essentially we're just adding in some light coming from whatever light source is in 
the scene. So here we might have some soft light coming from the background and we might have some more pronounced highlights coming from that moon that I apparently just made up. And understanding different materials is very important as well. If you've got things like armor and metal that may be quite reflective, you're going to have some more pronounced highlights. Whereas if the surface is a bit more matte or non-reflective, the highlights are going to be a bit softer and a bit more diffused. Right, now we're just brushing in a solid color with a low flow and building this up to add a bit of a highlight coming from that background image. And you can see the difference this makes. And now we're just going to try and generate some new hair here. And whilst we can draw hair from scratch and I cover that in my masterclass, we're building on top of a low res image. So anything we generate here is going to look infinitely better than that low res screenshot. And the hair in this was very much a back and forth process, generating the main body of the hair, but then going and adding my own hairs by drawing on top. So you can see here, I'm just going around with those hair brushes and I'm just adding in hair, highlights, all sorts of other little bits and pieces, a few strands and stray hairs flicking off into the wind. And again, just gradually building everything up. And then, whoa, you can see the color change. I've just shifted this to a more purple vibe rather than like, bluey turquoise. And here you can see me changing the Odogaron armor set to the original red color from the previous Monster Hunter game. And then I would always recommend playing around with the color lookup adjustment layer. Sometimes they can be useful, sometimes they can just spark inspiration, so always fun to play around with. And then we're just using some custom brushes to add a few particles. Gotta have some particles in the air, right? And then let's stamp in some fog, a bit of mist, change the color and dial it down a bit so it's not so pronounced. There we go. That's a bit better, Dan. Well done. And then at the end, the secret source, the camera raw filter, apply this to a flattened version of your design and have fun playing around with all of these sliders. And in particular, bump up the texture and the clarity to make your design really pop. And then after all of that, here we have the original. This is the initial refined version. And then a few hours later, this is the final version. And this uses the same techniques covered in this video with more time, lots of patience and a copious amount of coffee. So hopefully you enjoyed this. And if you'd like to go deeper into these techniques, I've got my Photoshop masterclass linked in the video description. But otherwise, there is a video on screen now that you can click on. So give that a click and I'll see you in a sec.